Hello guys, Bud here with Dependable Lawn Care. I purchased this 20 foot wide, 26 foot long carport from Carolina Carports. And this is the, uh, the box Steve version. So you notice that, that the, uh, the roof is a, is a pitched roof and it's not like a lot of carports where they just curve over the corners. It actually has a roof peak and a pitched roof. Uh, I ordered this to turn into a, a shop slash storage area for my lawn care business. And this video is uh, pertaining to closing the carport in. Uh, when I ordered it, I priced, you know, having it closed in on the sides and the back, and it was pretty expensive. You know, the, uh, the basic carport isn't too bad. Um, I did pay up a little bit to get eight foot sides because I wanted that extra height. I think they come standard with seven foot sides. And uh, other than that, I just I just bought it as is, chose my color, and uh, like I said, I priced closing it in and decided I could do it myself quite a bit cheaper. So I wanted to show you guys what I've done to close it in, and I'm I'm still finishing that process. But of course, on the sides. I'm using, uh, I'm using some tin, some roof tin that I pulled off of an old building. It was a, a project that I did a few years back. I pulled off all of the old tin roof and replaced it with new, new roofing. And, uh, and then I purchased the tin roof um, for pretty cheap. I'll just leave it at that. So I've got all this old roof metal to utilize. There's more of it out there. Um, 10 foot sheets and 16 foot sheets. So I have all that metal to utilize. So that's part of the part of the money that I'm saving on this project is the fact that I, I got all this roofing metal pretty cheap. So you can see I, I ran this like you would on a typical carport. I just ran it horizontal um, rather than running it up and down and having to have more cross members and all of that. I just I just went with the design of the carport. So so that's how I did the sides and the back. And the way I did the framework, which is what a lot of guys kind of struggle with trying to figure out what to do on the frame. So what I did is I went to my, my local metal supplier and they had this two and a half inch square tube. Um, it was in 19 foot pieces and it's 14 gauge. So it's, it's the perfect size to match the frame of the carport. I was able to pick it up for really cheap because this is metal that uh, had set outside and had some surface rust. Uh, you know, nothing, nothing bad. I mean, it's obviously not very rusty, just enough to turn it, turn it rusty red. And I uh, was able to purchase a lot of that for, for really cheap. Um, I picked up 12 of those pieces for just over $300. So I don't have very much in the framework. And then what I did is I took one piece and I had to weld a, a four inch extension on it, but I ran one piece from side to side, the very bottom piece, and I welded this angle bracket on here. Now I'm gonna talk about welding, but you know, if you guys don't have access to a welder, you could easily bolt or screw, you know, any of these fasteners together. You don't have to have a welder to uh, close in a carport the way I did it. I just chose to do it that way because I have, an, I have a welder, I have access um, to that, and, uh, and I can do it that way. So anyway, I just used a 90 degree L bracket to, to mount that into the corner. That's the only thing that's, that's holding that in there. Um, then I cut my, I guess you'd call these wall studs. I cut three of those. They're spaced out five feet apart, just like the... Well, that's a lot of stuff over there in the way, but just like the uh, frame of the carport, those are five feet apart. So that's exactly what I did on this back wall. And then I, uh, I painted those with a battleship gray enamel, a metal enamel, uh, just to protect those. You know, obviously you don't want it. You don't want to let that rust continue in something like this. So that's how I did those. And the way I joined them together, I'm going to show you that with the pieces that are on the sawhorse, but let me show you right here in place. As you can see, I, I cut out a notch on both sides, and I'll show you how I did that. And then I just let the two sides overlap 
the piece that it's mounting to, and then I used my uh, metal to metal self drilling screws to mount that right into it. And I did that on both sides so it's sandwiched together. Uh, did that top and bottom. Okay, so let me show you how I did those notches. I have a couple pieces here that I'm that I'm working on for the front of the building. So this is what I did. I just cut this piece out, uh, a cross cut here, and then a cut here, and a cut here. And I did all of that with an angle grinder. Um, you can use a, uh, a, a cutting disc. This is actually just a metal uh, cutting disc by Rigid. But you can use the, um, you know, the, the throwaway, I guess you'd say. Um, you know, these, these type of abrasive cutting discs. This is a, a 40 grit cutoff wheel is what this is. Doesn't matter what the brand is. Um, you know, you can get these pretty cheap. You only get so many cuts out of them and then they get so small that you just pitch them. So you could do it either way. Um, this, uh, I will say though that this rigid brand cutoff wheel is worth the money. I, I don't remember how much it was. I bought a two pack of them and so far I've done all of my cuts in here with that one wheel and it's still cutting great. So a uh, good investment there. But anyway, that's that's what I did. I, I cut out this three inch, uh, three inch piece, knocked that piece out, and then that just gives you these these two tabs that will overlap the framework. And then you screw into that tab from both sides right into your your square tube and uh, these two I'm cutting for the front so I'm only notching one end because the bottom end is going to have another piece coming off of it that's going to be welded to it uh, what I'm doing is I'm I'm closing in the first five feet on both sides of the front of the building I'm going to close in that first five feet and then that'll leave me a 10-foot doorway and I'm going to make a, a pair of double doors and I'm also going to be using this same square tube to make the the door frames and all of that and they'll be sheeted with tin i think on the front i'm actually going to run the tin vertical instead of horizontal um, but anyway that's that's how i've gone about doing this project so far um, i looked for videos on how to close in a carport how to frame in a carport and a lot of guys use lumber which you know you can do but um, I wanted to keep the building modular, meaning that if I at some point in time decide that I want to take it all apart and move it to a different location, I can do that. So nothing is, is permanently welded together. It's all um, you know, screwed together where I can take it apart and move it. And I'm just trying to basically kind of run with that design. And uh, so that's how I've got it. That's how I, I went about framing it in. Um, that's how I went about sheeting it. Um, that's all pretty basic stuff but this is just an idea for guys that might be wanting to do a similar project and not really sure not really sure where to start or how to go about it so I'm finishing up for the day just wanted to show you guys what we got done uh, my my lovely wife came out and helped me most of the day helped me get some of this knocked out but uh, I framed in the first five feet like I talked about before and I'll show you how those are connected. Now right here at the corner, the upright piece and the bottom piece are welded together. So basically what I did is I made an L piece for each side. And then it's, uh, it's lapped over on the end, like I talked about, and then screwed from this side and then screwed from this side. And then down here, <clears throat> Instead of an L bracket, I welded a tab onto the top and onto the side. I just touched wet paint. Uh, but welded a tab on both of those sides to screw into the frame. So it's attached there by those two tabs, and then it's attached up on top by means of lapping over on each side and screwed. And then I also drilled and staked. See that stake goes all the way through. So I actually made the, uh, the sides really nice and sturdy. i uh, very pleased with how that turned out. So then after I did the same thing on this side, the L, the L bracket, I then put in a header 
which is just a single pipe. And I did the, uh, the overlapping on the ends on it as well. So it's overlapped. And a few screws on each side. So that just kind of uh, sturdied everything up. And it is also staked over here. So basically that makes up the door frame. And then the door frames themselves are uh, basically just two rectangles. Let me just got this in place to kind of keep the door closed for now. So if I take that clamp off, that other piece is just clamped on. But uh, here's the door frame. So like I said, it's just a big rectangle. Uh, I've got some heavy duty hinges. These are uh, kind of like a barn door style hinge, galvanized. Uh, what I did is I bent it right here so that it kind of wraps over two sides of the frame and then I cut it off here. You know, these were these were probably three inches longer. I thought about wrapping it around even one more side, but I, I thought that was probably a little bit overkill. Uh, this is nice and sturdy. There's no, there's no play or vibration in the system. So... It works. I guess that's uh, basically what I'm saying. It works, so that's what I went with. And I did use bigger screws on the hinges. Uh, those are those are self-drilling metal-to-metal screws, but they're quarter-inch diameter screws instead of just the normal, um, I think number 12 screws you know that you use everywhere else on a metal building. So my uh, my frame is all in in the front. And other than figuring out a latch on the door, I'm ready for metal. Oh, also another thing I did was on the other door. So this is, this is to keep one door in place uh, because what I'll be doing is keeping this door fixed in place most of the time and entering and exiting through this door. Um, so I'll have the ability to open up both doors if I want the, the full you know, open door, but if I just need to come in here, grab something, put something away, um, you know, pull out a piece of equipment, I don't necessarily have to have a 10-foot opening for that. Uh, with five-foot doors, most of most of the time, I'll just be able to open one door. So, um, so I've got this stake right here. I've got a pipe welded on that it fits through. Fits nice and nice and snug, you know, enough where you don't have a lot of uh, movement. And then I'm gonna add some gravel to this because as the gravel has settled, um, I need to add about two or three inches of gravel back in here before I'm done with this project. So after I add the gravel back in here, uh, I'll drive a piece of pipe into the ground that this will actually fit into. So when you slide that bolt down, it'll go into another piece of pipe so that it always goes to the same place each time. And you know, of course, it'll be lined up with the door frame and everything. So I still have to uh, figure out some type of latch. It'd probably just be as simple as a as a uh, tab here and a tab here. So when they're lined up, I can put a lock through the two of them. And then on the top, I think I'm actually gonna have a tab sticking up that will touch the frame. So when the door's closed, that'll rest up against the door frame and just give it a little extra, uh, little extra support there. And of course, when I put metal on it, you know, when I put the tin over everything, I can let the tin overlap a little bit and accomplish the same thing. So I might just, I might just do that. I might just let the tin overlap, you know, an inch on the top or something and uh, take care of that. So I wouldn't even have to do anything there. The only thing I really need to do is just have some, some type of latch or lock on here. Uh, so when this is closed up, I can latch it, lock it, walk away. You know, I will have I will have tools and equipment in here that I wouldn't want someone getting into, even though even though I've got security cameras and all of that. Deter a thief if I can, as opposed to trying to catch them after the fact. So, anyway, guys, that's uh, that's what I've what I've done so far today. Uh, we got all that accomplished since this morning when I when I shot the first half of the video, just showing you how I framed in the back wall and uh, closed in the rest. So so that's it for now, guys. That's, uh, that's one way to, 
to frame in and close in a carport to turn it into a shop or storage building you know whatever your uh, whatever your need is so thanks for watching get out there and make some money and we'll catch you on the next one guys